Uh, <laughs> how carrier guidelines aren't found in any policy and the carriers are in bed with the TPA firms utilizing these fake policy guidelines to underpay claims and underpay commissions, only to be settled by higher amounts with the GC or HO. Firms don't want adjusters anymore. They want glorified photo takers and scopers. The, the ideal scenario for the insurance company is also, frankly, the ideal scenario for the insured, the policyholder. And that is, I have a loss as a policyholder, right? And I pick up my phone and I submit hit submit a claim. And then it says, hey, click here to start your inspection process, right? And wave my phone around the room with AR technology and it it collects all the data it tells me what kind of baseboard this this carpet baseboard is it can see that there's a texture on the wall and then i hit uh, submit and then three seconds later i get pinged by my bank and it says i got a direct deposit for thirty seven thousand dollars that is what they want sure and that if as a as a consumer of, ins of homeowners insurance that's what i want right yeah. i don't i want this to be as fast and as simple as possible you know, if later I got to deal with the contractor and get things ironed out, fine, right? The best adjusters are the ones who are writing the the best estimate that they can in the first visit. Yeah, as for for especially for cat and for really for daily for for IAs because you know you may be you may have your hands tied a little bit with um, not being able to pay O and P. Right. Sure. And or how well, they want you to paint something. Right. Or, how they you want know, you to texture it. It's 22 square foot openings and all that kind of stuff. Right? Do they just want me to go ahead and do the minimum repair on drywall or do they want me to actually cut out 32 yeah. square feet? I don't believe, don't get me wrong, some contractors will go ahead and they'll take scraps from other jobs. But is that the right way for us to conduct business with right. them? Are we saying, hey, no, you've probably got it lying around. I don't know that. No. No. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's one of the reasons why the guy, there's a lot of handy dudes that, that are adjusters um, that will be like, oh, shoot, I mean, you could just take a piece of sandpaper and a paper clip and you could fix that in 30 <laughs> minutes. I sure. could have that looking like, like nothing ever happened. Yeah. But it's actually a, you know, $2,500 repair to have a contractor do it. You're, you're paying the contractor rate. You're not paying the handyman rate. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we talked about overhead and profit. And I will say that this is probably the biggest piece of this. You know, the estimating guidelines are there to, to give the adjuster some sort of guardrails. Yes. And th again, the backstop to all this is them being sued or them being going to appraisal and, and you know, getting some like, you know, social justice warrior umpire that's going to be like, he hates all insurance companies and he's going to like... <laughs> You know, well, it would have been fifteen thousand dollars, and now you're paying one point five million. Right? And that happens. I mean, it does. It does. So, the, the long and short of it is, is that, especially, it, it's a little bit of our fault with the variable, the variable quality, and the and the, the lack of training in certain areas. Right. Yes. You have really good adjusters, and then you have people who could be really good adjusters, but they don't they don't think to get the good training, or they don't know how to, or they. Don't think they should or whatever. They, I, know I was a contractor for 20 years. I know how to do all this stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Some of their options are limited. I mean, with, right. with adjusters, it's, you know, is this person a licensed adjuster? Were they a contractor before? We don't really know the background of who's training them. And sometimes right. they're falling into the trap of, oh, you know what? I see this person on Facebook promoting something. I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm curious. I'm going to take the class for however much it is. And then this person you find out has only been adjusting for like two years, two or three at best. And you're falling down the rabbit hole of your, it's the blind leading the blind. And it's, right, it's right. a, it's, it is a trap in our industry. There's, there's variables here. So I think that, I don't think that there may be some estimating guidelines that are, that are onerous, right? There may be like, well, the, the starter strip and the ridge cap thing. I mean, that's, you know. We know what they're going to do with it. I mean, there yeah. now is a line item to where it is for cutting the three tab or excuse me. Yeah. Cutting the three tab into the starter as well as into the rich cap. Yeah. Those are little variable, little tweaky things. And, it, and that also is a little like a sort of a cyclical thing as well. There's more than one cycle in the industry. Yeah. You know, oh, absolutely. They'll, it's there's like a. If they're they're paying everything, it's more of a customer service sort of a thing, and then then they realize, well, after a few years of that, it's they're paying a lot of extra money that they could save, or they get a new CEO or claims director or whatever, so they tighten that up, and so now we're not paying as much, and they tighten up the estimated guidelines, right? They're not they're not arbitrary. I can't think of a situation. I'm sure there there has been certainly, 
where I wrote everything I possibly could within the constraints of the estimating guidelines and didn't have a contractor look at the bottom line and go, like, oh, I don't think that'll work. No problem. Especially on exterior restoration stuff. Yeah. Um, overhead and profit, a little bit different. Um, the three trades thing uh, is it's got, you got a screen over here and a window wrap, right? Which is siding. Right, so that's a different trade, and then you've got a water spot on the ceiling inside, so you got drywall and paint, and you've got a section of fence. Right, well, there's three trades right there. Throw an overhead and profit on it. Well, what's overhead and profit for? Right, it's for construction management. So, do you really need to have somebody with a calendar and you know a timeline and everything to replace to pop that screen out and put a new one in, and then do the window wrap? and then do the interior stuff, the drywall, and then do the section of fence. Those could all happen at any time, at the same time, right? Same sure. thing with the roof, right? The roof can, maybe with some possible exceptions of like fascia and maybe gutters, the roof can go on and off at any time. So they don't need construction management. They don't need to put that in a timeline and a calendar, you know, to coordinate with the electrician and, and the drywaller and the plumber and the painter and the flooring guy and the cabinet guy and everybody you know, whereas if you have interior damage, you know, this is where overhead profit really comes into play, I think, because you're going to have, you know, you, pff, water spot or not water spot. We say you have like a, a dishwasher or something like that that breaks and it ruins the floor and you got to do a two foot flood cut up in four rooms. Right. You got flooring cabinets. You know, there's some in exterior wall installation, insulation and stuff like that. Probably not going to have any electrical or plumbing or anything like that. But. You got to do the insulation before you do the paint, right? Sure. So the painter shows up. He's like, that's when he's got it in his calendar. I can be there on the 13th. And he shows up and the insulation guy hasn't even been there yet. <laughs> yeah. And then you're still paying for somebody to make right. that minimum somebody charge. Has to, somebody has to manage those guys, right? Yeah. And uh, do you the, let the homeowner do it or are you? That's the thing too. At the opposite end of the spectrum, it's, you know, for somebody who's, let's say, a stay-at-home mother or father and, you know, they're, they're just driving their kids to soccer every day. Where does the complexity lie with them? Are they going to be familiar right. with this line of work? I mean, more than likely, no. So sometimes the overhead and profit is warranted, especially when it's just somebody who doesn't know any better and, yep. and the ignorance is what gets them. So it's a take and give, I guess, with that. I mean, I know at the end of the day that contractors making good money. I mean, we've made jokes plenty of times in our industry where, hey, like we're in the wrong line of, of work. We, right. When you start being like those tarp guys and charging exorbitant amounts yeah. just for a simple, you know, hundred thirty thousand dollar pickup truck. Ooh, yeah, they <laughs> they ride in style, that's for certain. So, but yeah, it's 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 tricky. I mean, when you're trying to go by the carrier guidelines, it, it like you said, it's guardrails. It's just to keep you in the path. But to a certain point, does your reviewer is your f reviewer even familiar with how to rebuild a room? I, I've had reviewers that. You know, God bless them. Sometimes they're in there longer than me, and I, I have no say in, in the matter. But I mean, it was like where I got trained to take my IICRC WRT, yep. and I'm having the reviewer kick back category three water removal of drywall and saying, hey, that's not warranted because it's a mitigation line item. Now, because I took the training, I know better. You're, the, the firm that I was with was already using. They were already using an antimicrobial spray. They opened the door for me to say, hey, if you're using an antimicrobial spray, which is under the same category, why can't I use the WRT? Because technically, the S500 says that that water stain is Cat 3 water. I mean, right. it, it is from a windstorm, regardless if it's named or not, it is coming through other pieces of or other components right, of right. the roof roofing and insulation yeah and so at the end of the day I, it's category three water it needs to be removed a yeah. certain way and it passed i mean it's i think at the end of the day the carriers are going to make decisions about what is and isn't in place and we almost don't have a say in the matter we can still write an email to the reviewer make our case is it doing you more harm than good up to you to decide but at least you're documenting it properly. And that way, if you go to a deposition, I mean, hey, it's kind of an open and shut case. Do they even want you there in the first place? Right. It is the guardrails for the adjuster to speak on. And it's up to us to decide. Yeah. But at, I think at the end of the day, and I might be rambling here, at least we can try to make the case to the file reviewer and get somewhere with it as opposed to nowhere at all. Yeah. And, and I think the estimated guidelines are more than just like things that you can't do. It's like how to do a lot of stuff. Sure. Right? Some some carriers have estimating guidelines that are dozens or hundreds of pages long. Oh, yeah. And you can whatever. You, how do you, you know, how do they want us to do, you know, 
whatever it is, right? Sure. It's command F or control F. Exactly. Type, 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 and then boom, there it is. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you know, do I need to retexture the whole wall or can I just feather it, you know? Or, yeah, yeah. Depending on the texture. What do they want it to do? Depending on the complexity of the yeah. loss, it, it just depends. Yeah. Oh, and I just wanted to say that sometimes it is known as kicking the can down the road. That was another point I wanted to make. Sure. That is sometimes what they want to do. They're paying somebody an hourly basis at the desk. Sometimes the desk is just the, going to be the person to resolve it. But it's not up to us on how they want to make their money or how they want to lose their money. It's, right. It's it's a it's a losing battle That's sometimes. Right. That's exactly right. But it, yeah, these companies are just exactly that. They're companies started by a guy or a gal or you know it's whoever. And they, that's how, if that's how they want to do business, the market is going to ultimately, you know, punish or reward them based on how they conduct themselves. So what does it actually look like when adjusters with decades of experience between them scope a hail damaged house on video? What about how to actually do a claim in Xactimate? What is stability and how do you even get started in it? What if there was one place, one huge and expanding library of property claims adjusting videos showing how it's done? What if there were also complete Xactimate certifications as well as the latest and most up-to-date Xactimate mobile training? You know, what if? What if the dream was a reality? Get started for free binging all the desk and field claims adjusting videos you can stand right now at adjustertvplus.com. Think of it as a virtual ride along. Speaking of ride alongs, click here to get right along to the next video. Because it's a, well, do you see how it's, it's a pun, you see? Ride along, get it right. Just move right along versus ride along. It's right along, get right along to it.